Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News. Please like the video and make sure you are still subscribed. I wanted to go back to this Arctic News article that I kind of touched on the other day in the live chat or live stream. <clears throat> this is from November 5th, and I just kind of wanted to get a little more in depth into reading what they have to say. Uh, this is by Andrew uh, Glickson, earth and climate scientist at Australian National University, a record CO2 rise rate since the KT dinosaur extinction 66 million years ago as the concentration of atmosphere CO2 has risen to 408 parts per million and the total greenhouse gas level, including methane and nitrous oxide combined to near 500 parts per million CO2 equivalent, the stability threshold of the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets currently melting at an accelerated rate has been exceeded. The consequent expansion of tropics and the shift of climate zones toward the shrinking poles lead to increasingly warm and dry conditions under which firestorms currently engulfing large parts of South America, uh, California, Alaska, Siberia, Sweden, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Angola, Australia, and elsewhere have become a dominant factor in the destruction of terrestrial habitats. Since the 18th century, combustion of fossil fuels has led to the release of more than 910 billion tons of carbon dioxide uh, by human activity raising CO2 to about 408, and it's much higher in certain places. And it's actually, I think we surpassed that. I'm, I'm, I think he's using, using an older mark. Uh, as compared to the 280, 300 parts per million range, Prior to the onset of the Industrial Age, by the early 21st century, the current CO2 rise rate has reached uh, two to three parts per million a year. <clears throat> and there's the there's the big graph, the, the curve, if you will, steady rise, and the trajectory is not so. Um, so much horizontal anymore as now more vertical. <clears throat> Allowing for the transient albedo, albedo enhancing effects of sulfur dioxide and other aerosols, mean global temperature has potentially reached two degrees Celsius. Let me read that again. Allowing for the transient albedo enhancing effects of sulfur dioxide and other aerosols, mean global temperature has potentially reached two degrees Celsius above pre industrial temperatures. And uh, the global consensus is that we're at one or a little over one or something like that, but it, it keeps shifting around. The baseline shifts, the temperature shifts. Current greenhouse gas forcing and global mean temperatures are approaching Miocene like composition. That was 5.3 uh, to 23 million years ago. The current carbon dioxide rise rate exceeds the fastest rates estimated for the KT asteroid impact 66 million years ago and the PETM hypo hypothermal event 55.9 million years ago by an order of magnitude. The current growth rate of atmospheric greenhouse gases in particular over the last 70 years or so, may appear gradual in our lifetime, but it constitutes an extreme event in the recorded history of Earth. The rate of change. Uh, so, here, so here he's marking uh, what looks like the rate of change, CO2 parts per million a year of different periods. And atop the, atop the list is the period between 1750 and 2018. And then on top of that is the period between 1975 and 2018. Um, as Chris Farley so eloquently put it, holy shnikes. The definition of a tipping point in the climate system uh, is a threshold which one, once exceeded can no lead to uh, large changes in the state of the system or where the confluence of individual factors combines into a single stream. The term tipping element 
describes subcontinental scale subsystems of the Earth system that are susceptible to being forced into a new irreversible state by small perturbations. Insofar as a tipping point can be identified in current developments of the climate system, the weakening of the Arctic boundary, indicated by slowing down and increased disturbance of the jet stream, which is happening now and happening like all the time, heralds a likely tipping point, an example being the recent Beast from the East freeze. So yeah, this is a little older, right? Because Beast from the East was like two years ago, wasn't it? And we're, I think this year's uh, CO2 level is like 415 or something like that. 411, 415, I don't know. The report by the National Academy Press 2011 states, as the planet continues to warm, it may be approaching a critical climate threshold beyond which rapid decadal scale and potentially catastrophic changes may occur that are not anticipated. Not anticipated. Faster than expected. Um, direct evidence, expansion of the tropics, migration of climate zones toward the poles. Um, extratropical cyclones move. They shift rain away from temperate regions. Historically rely on winter rainfalls. Australia is highly vulnerable to expanding tropics as about 60% of the continent lies north of 30 degrees south. <clears throat> Low-lying land areas including coral islands, delta and low coastal and river valleys would be flooded due to sea level rise to Miocene-like sea levels of, of approximately uh, 40 plus minus 50, 15 meters above pre-industrial pre-industri- levels. Accelerated flow of ice, meltwater flow from ice sheets into the oceans is reducing temperatures over tracts of the North Atlantic and Cir- Circumantarctic oceans. Strong temperature contrast between cold polar derived fronts and warm tropical derived air masses lead to extreme weather events, retarding habitats, in particular over coastal regions. Um, according to Berger and uh, Lutre, 2002, the effects of high atmospheric greenhouse gas levels would delay the next ice age by tens of thousands of years, during which the next ice age, not not the one we're currently in, guys, uh, during which chaotic tropical to hypertropical conditions include extreme weather events would persist over much of the Earth until atmospheric CO2 and ins- insulation subside. says humans are likely to survive in relatively favorable parts of the earth such as subpolar regions and sheltered mountain valleys where cooler conditions would allow flora and fauna to persist get thee to the cooler mountain valley or sheltered mountain valley to try and avoid a global calamity abrupt reduction in carbon emissions is essential but since the high level of co2 equivalent is uh, activating amplifying feedbacks from land and ocean global attempts to draw down about 50 to 100 parts per million of co2 from the atmosphere using very effective negative emissions is essential such efforts would include streaming air through basalt and serpentine biochar cultivation seaweed sequestration reforestation, sodium hydroxide pipe systems, and other methods. <clears throat> These might be the methods. While trillions continue, continue to be poured into preparation of future wars, currently no government is involved in any serious attempt at the defense of life on Earth. True that. Um, which is why I'm for people that are against... Um, forever wars and bringing home troops and cutting the military budget or taking, shifting the military budget into a wartime climate change mitigation uh, scenario. Just my thoughts. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so with the links below. Until next time, peace. (laughs) 